When does this suffering stop? Is there an end to it? How to make it stop? Death. This will stop when I die. I have to die. These were my last thoughts before calling my mom to ask her to book an appointment for me uh, to a psychiatrist. In that moment, knowledge has saved me. I knew that the thoughts of death and suicide are symptoms of depression. There was no doubt anymore. I had to face it. But I was so weak and so confused that I needed someone else to make the call for me. I made the point to drive there on my own. But then I started questioning myself if I know how to drive. This is what depression does to a person. It brings a not so visible uh, disability, which is worse if that person labels himself as a strong person and if others label him as a strong person as well. It makes it very hard to admit it, to express it, to seek help. And it leads to all kinds of masks and camouflaging behaviors. This was the 10th day of a living hell that has the size of my skull. It was the 10th day of being confined in a messy flat, in a messy room, laying, staring at the ceiling, not being able to sleep at night, not being, not being able to pull myself out of bed during daytime. I had lost all appetite. Uh, I didn't want to shower. I didn't want to, I didn't want to brush my teeth. I didn't care at all about my hygiene. Inside my head, there was Confusion, incoherent thoughts, guilt for things I've done, for things I haven't done, anxiety, panic. It was January, and depression came to say hi again. This was the last major episode of a string of several others dating back to my teens, but when I checked, unnoticed, seemed like normal teen behavior, um, misinterpreted into something else, blamed on something else like career problems, relationship problems, uh, unemployment, and so on. Growing up, I had built an identity that fitted the stereotypes of being strong, uh, being tough, being resilient. I also had behaviors that much later I understood as clear symptoms of depression. I was angry all the time, I was aggressive, I was very comfortable with violence, I was a risk taker, um, I was a training addict, I was intimidating. These same behaviors are celebrated among men and women. I had forced myself in an environment reeking of hypermasculinity. In sports, people are encouraged to be strong, to be competitive, to dominate over opponents, to show no sign of pain, show no si sign of weakness. Seeking help or expressing too much emotion are perceived as signs of weakness or lack of mental strength. And in a place where winning is the obje objective, you don't want to look weak. Don't get me wrong, some of these behaviors and traits are great life skills, but they are also the typical behaviors that men and women use to mask a mental disorder. In my case, it fitted perfectly to my identity, and depression went unnoticed by me and others for years. Denial. Whenever uh, I had an episode, denial whenever someone else suggested that I may have depression. The misconceptions we have about the disorder and the ideas we have built about masculinity and femininity make, the depre make depression look like a very unmanly uh, disorder. And obviously, I am as man as it can get. Episodes kept coming, some with triggers, some without. I ended up killing my body in order to save my brain. I was involved in heavy contact sports with many injuries. I was drinking. I was involved in all sorts of reckless behavior, all attributed to my larger than life personality. I suffered on the inside while maintaining the resilient profile I had created all those years on the outside. I suppose very few people suspected that I suffered from depression. I earned a PhD at a very young age. I entered academia quite early in my life. I'm a public figure to some extent. I'm a social butterfly. I'm most of the time positive. 
and probably inspiring to some, you know, all the things that uh, people perceive as success. If that gloomy Sunday managed to kill myself, I suppose many people would have been surprised. Him can be. He looks so funny. He looks so full of life. These are the common reactions people have whenever a strong person or a successful person kills him or herself. That day I realized it was beyond me. It was a matter of life and death, literally. In my darkest moment, I realized that I wanted to leave, but I really wanted the suffering to stop, and I wanted my demons to go to sleep. I couldn't fight anymore. I was exhausted. I was confronted with the option of dying or making the call for help. And I made the call for help. It has been a revival and a real metamorphosis ever since. In our efforts to cope with life and the modern jungle, we offer toughness, stoicism as antidotes. We preach positive thinking, and we even encourage people sometimes to put on the happy mask. Poor mental health has no place in such environments. This approach can be very damaging. It stops, it stops us from expressing ourselves openly. It forces us to look and behave in ways that are really unnatural to our psyche. It locks us in silent suffering. When I started talking openly about depression, I realized that it's very, very liberating. Speaking up helps in the normalization of the disorder and treatment, and the deconstruction of the expectation to be strong all the time. It's us being more human, and as humans, we are not required to suffer in silence. Embracing pain does not mean silencing it or bearing it. It means expressing it. It means seeking a solution to the problem. Thank you.